What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Jake Shavink here and Packers fans. Got a special mock draft episode here for you guys. We are going to do two mock drafts in one video, a little Packers mock draft duel using the PFF simulator. We're going to go through one that's a little more predictive, right? You know, tune it more to what the Packers might end up doing in a few weeks and then maybe get a little chaotic with the second one. So off we go to the simulator for a Packers mock draft duel. All right, guys, here we go into the first of two mock drafts. We're going to keep this more and more predictive, probably less trades, right? More straightforward. So here at pick 25, have a lot of options. Johnny Newton. I don't think Nate Wiggins is going to be Green Bay's type. I don't think Amarius Mims is going to be Green Bay's type. You know, I don't think Tyler Guyton's even available. Yeah, Graham Barton's not available. I think it, it shortens the list. And I do think this guy should be one of the favorites in the clubhouse right now. Uh, I know there's clashing online on whether cornerback's a true need or not. I, I'm just not buying the room just yet. I'm not sure Green Bay is going to either. I, I think Kool-Aid McKinstry is going to be the selection here. A lot of middle field close coverage, right? That's going to lean on the corners, on the perimeter. I think McKinstry has the experience, the instincts, the, the versatility and coverage. I, I think you maybe question the long speed a little bit on film, but... There's a lot of boring reps where he is in the hip pocket, right? He's re recognizing where the where receivers are running routes, and he's making plays on the ball. It's Kool-Aid McKinstry here at pick 25. Second round, I think it gets a little tougher, right? Where would Green Bay lean if they had a lot of options? I'm going to lean away from linebacker early. I think there's a chance they could do it early. I don't think... I, I, Peyton Wilson's a tough one with all the injuries and the age concerns. What I do think Green Bay likes is a lot of traits, and I know that he's coming off of injury, but I do think that this guy should be in consideration and might be the selection at 41 to to maybe some chagrin. But Kieran Amagaji, okay, I, I know Packers fans think tackle is fine. There's no issues. I don't know. I, I think... You know, you're only as good as as maybe your third tackle, right? There's always that saying, you're only as good as your backup QB. I think to not have tackle depth, and I know about Tanuda and Jones, I get it, but they haven't really played. So adding competition to the room, right, with, with Amagaji, impressive length at the tackle position, impressive athleticism, right, improvements year over year, I get it. He's in the Ivy League. This is, this is a perfect spot for him, right, to develop. If you believe in Rasheed Walker a lot, you give him a chance to develop, get into the room, get into the NFL training program. And I think there's a lot of upside here. Taking Amagaji, yes, at 41. 58. I think it gets a little trickier, right? You could go linebacker, could go offensive line again. I, I do think there is, you know, a chance that we're looking defensive line early. I know there's a chance that running back comes into the equation. At, at pick 58 here with, with maybe Brooks or Trey Benson. But I do think Green Bay has talked about staying big at edge. And the reason that they're talking about that is you, you've seen the kind of, oh, will they make adjustments based on this new scheme? No, they're, they're staying big. Van Ness, Gary, after that, what do you have? Enigbari coming off ACL. Preston Smith may be on a deal that, that could be... Uh, nearing its end in Green Bay. He's a fit, and I know it's not popular, but we're going to go Marshawn Neeland from Western Michigan. A lot of length, a lot of power, right? A lot to work with in terms of potential. It's a Green Bay thing. They, they love swinging on potential in the draft. That's, that's just how they operate. Now, at pick 88, I think we're going to make the, the, the pick that I think Green Bay is going to lean into. I, Dominic Pooney keeps coming up in a lot of these things. Tackle guard versatility, really impressive film overall. I, I just, it, it's going to be hard to pass on a player this reliable and, and this versatile, right? That Green Bay needs help at guard, but he can play some tackle in a pinch. And I think that's going to entice Green Bay at 88. Dominic Pooney there. 91. You know, a lot of people like Jerry Jones, slot corner. That's possible. Uh, Defensive interior is a possibility as well. Got the corner in tow, right? You could look at safety at this point. I think it's a little more of a hard sell. What I don't think is, is a tough sell uh, at this point in the draft 
is grabbing one of these halfbacks who are, you know, oops, let's go all bigs, perhaps, with, with a player like Trey Benson, who has shown a lot of big playability, a lot of power in his game, you know, forcing missed tackles. I think that's something that, that they should indeed consider. But last second curveball on you. We're going to get the linebacker here in Cedric Gray, who I think has a chance, a chance to be the Mike linebacker, right? Has some impressive length at the linebacker position. I think the instincts are really off the charts, especially dropping into coverage, right? I think it gives you maybe a little bit of question as to who is going to be the Mike. But I, I do think Cedric Gray and Dominic Pooney are just about as good of a third round as you could ask for. Now, here in the fourth, I think it gets a little more difficult. you got a lot of running backs, but I, I, then again, I don't think it's that difficult. Kenny Clark, is he going to stick around? Maybe. But you still have a Devontae Wyatt who is, is struggling on early downs. Carl Brooks, I know a lot of people are excited about him, and you should be. But if Clark's not around... Room gets a little thin pretty quickly. TJ Slayton, expiring deal after the season too. Christian Boyd, pass rush runway, like the 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 ability to affect the game on all three downs, it's it's very difficult to pass on there. I, I do think that the defensive line's another position where it's like, oh, that could be earlier than we think. Wouldn't shock me a whole lot. Now, this is where it gets fun as well. Later on day three. Yeah, I I, I it's gonna be hard not to here. I know he made an impressive leap, and I think, you know, maybe you question the one-year wonder of a running back like this, but at this point, got multiple offensive linemen ready to rock already. We're going to go Tyron Tracy. We're going to go athletic and tons of upside at running back where Jacobs and Dylan are there. You have Emmanuel Wilson, right? Another kind of upside move in, on day three on athleticism with Tyron Tracy, who has played wide receiver, uh, I believe, for Iowa, then goes to running back. And he had a dominant season for Purdue. Feels feels very packery, does he not? You know, look look at look at across the board what we see here. Right tackle, right guard, center, left guard. I don't know how you don't at least think about it, right? We're gonna go Tanner Bortolini here. I, I think it's an easy one. I think there are a couple late round guys, him and Delmar Glaze, who I think are are, are really nice Packers fits. We're going to take Bordellini here at pick 202. Now, you might be wondering, safety hasn't been addressed. What are you going to do about safety? Well, that's easy. Don't know why he's still here. We're going to pick him right now. Uh, Keaton Oladapo, improving coverage, skill set, right? Has played in the slot a little bit. Can be a dominant player in the box, right? 6'2", 216 ish That's a, a really nice compliment to a player like Xavier McKinney. Two picks left. I do think Green Bay has to double up at linebacker. And I think it's just it's it's a question of flavor here. What what type of player would you like to have on your team? If you're still looking for Mike help, that's gonna be a tough sell. I think I think Nathaniel Watson is, is still a player who can make a lot of plays off the ball. We're gonna go Nathaniel Watson here at 245. Now to round things out. Would Green Bay consider QB? Perhaps. Perhaps they would. Um, ultimately, though, I do think it, it's going to come down to, you know, athleticism. You know, wh wh where's some upside that, that Green Bay can throw someone's way. And we're going to finish it out at tight end, believe it or not. I think that's the way to roll here. Just don't think there's a lot else at the position where you could double up at running back. You could triple down potentially at linebacker and I wouldn't be mad about it, but you know, you add some athleticism in the room and Jared Wiley. I don't see why not like it's late enough in the draft. You go that direction. So there you go. More predictive a little bit with, with guys like, Tracy, maybe Bordellini is too much of an interior guy for Green Bay. But like overall, I do think this is something Green Bay could definitely trot out there um, once the uh, once the draft gets underway. Let's reset. And let's get to uh, maybe more of a fun mock draft for you guys and a little more chaotic. 
All right, guys, here we go into the fun mock. I think there's a chance Green Bay trades up, but I think it's for one of three players. Uh, Olu Fashanu, I think Terry Arnolds, and Quinya Mitchell. If one of those three becomes available in this area here, I think Green Bay could make the move. And I think we're going to make the move here for Terry and Arnold. Okay. It's going to cost a second, probably. But I think it might be worth it to go up a notch to get a player of Terry and Arnold's caliber, right? With with all the athleticism, with enough speed, right? And, and transitional quicks, right? The ability to make plays on the football. I think when you look at Arnold's, you definitely see an ascending player. And I think you see a coverage versatile player. So middle field close isn't going to be something that he steps into and is 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 out of place early on. I, I think this makes a ton of sense for Green Bay. I know it limits the draft capital, but when you look at Green Bay, what they often do is pick up a lot more picks just by moving down a couple spots. And if the opportunity arises where you could trade down a little ways, I think Green Bay takes that opportunity, right? This is a long way to move down with Miami. And with with not a lot of capital, I think I'd rather go here and and get as much as possible from from Kansas City, and then you know, n two, three, four. I, I think you offer this one, and I know it's a, a long move back. I know that it's one where you're not taking advantage of a whole lot in the second round, but I do think there's going to be players available in this spot who I think Green Bay could could really look at as okay, let's. Let's get some help uh, for Jordan Love. Let's get some help for the defense, right? And and we're going to start here because it's fun, because we're we're not limiting ourselves to what Green Bay potentially would do. We're going to take a player that that I want to take because I really like him. Uh, Christian Haynes, just a film room on him on the channel. I think this is a really nice zone fit, guard or center, but I think he steps in right away and plays right guard uh, for Green Bay. And we get a lot of picks in round three and round four to really round out this roster. And I think right here, you talk about wanting to have some fun. I think you 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 definitely consider another interior player. You you could easily go that route and sell me on it. I'm probably going to select Dominic Pooney again here as one of the picks, just because again, it's just it's it's too tempting to pass on a player like that. And we have two more picks in the third round, right? So that's that's really helpful. So you, you start with you start with Arnold and Haynes. I feel like that's a really really strong start, Pooney. I just I, I can't stop taking him in mock drafts because he's he's just that good a player. I know he doesn't fit the agility criteria, but man, I am I I'm really thrilled with what I see from Dwayne Carter in terms of pocket pushing skill set. That I'm a hundred percent willing to take the swing here at ninety one. Now for the third pick in the third round, I think you can you can have some fun as well with. Okay, do we want, you know, a, a player, you know, that's fallen a little bit that, that we could maybe believe in to to be that guy at safety next to Xavier McKinney? You definitely could convince me on that, but i think at linebacker i think we're going to end up doing it potentially all over again and, and potentially taking a guy like cedric gray because ultimately i do think green bay has to be in at linebacker and we're, we're going to make this pick again third round is going to look very similar in both mocks but that's just kind of how it rolls i, I think that gray is somebody who makes a lot of sense and they need help there at linebacker it's it's just impossible to pass it up now in the the fourth round, you know, we, we could have a lot more fun, I think. And I do think it starts with maybe selecting a guy where you feel like, okay, maybe we don't have to double down here. Maybe we, you know, keep things rolling with, with how the defensive back room looks. But I do think this guy has the connection to Boston College, right, in Elijah Jones, who I think could be easily be the selection here. However, it's not as fun. We're going to go get the H back. We're going to get Ben Sinnott here at tight end. I know Green Bay hasn't met with any tight ends. They're not, you know, talking about it a whole lot. But it's a fun mock. So Ben Sinnott to be uh, the, the H back in that offense where if you, your 13 personnel gets gets really, really crazy, 
with Sinnott, with, with Musgrave, with Kraft. I'd have a lot of fun with that. Now, I, I do want to address running back, and I think that's going to be where we go next. I, I think Will Shipley, impressive quicks, impressive make-you-miss skills, and enough speed to boot where, you know, let's just have a little fun. Let's go get a player like this and, and, and see how he kind of foils to a player like Jacobs and, and, and A.J. Dillon, and I think that makes for a very, very fun room. A little bit on the smaller side, right? I think he's maybe a little bit less than 208 at the position off the top of my head. Makes it a little more difficult, but I really do like that. So we got two offensive linemen to this point, and I think, you know, safety needs attention still, of course. Linebacker still needs attention for sure. But if you're still not sold on the corner room, I think you have fun and you get a player who's been good in man coverage, right? Really took the leap this year. I know it's not as many snaps as the year before, but playing in SEC games, I, I know it's maybe not the top tier of the SEC, but could be an ascending player in, in Dwight McLaughlin because, you know, it, there's a chance that corner room isn't as deep as we think it is. And, you know, Maybe Carrington Valentine doesn't doesn't find it. Maybe Eric Stokes is gone after the season ends, and then then you have to really take a long look at your room. I, I think we're gonna do uh, something we haven't done yet, and I know that that safety hasn't been addressed. We've got two corners, we've got a running back, we got tight end, which you know maybe not as popular, right? I do think Trey Taylor's intriguing, and believe green bay's met with him that could be incorrect but i do think you know the thorpe award winner will give him a shot here on day three as we keep moving right i know jalen ford was a popular one. Oh, that hurts tanner bortolini want to get a third offensive lineman in tow here and i think we're going to go all the way down the board for this guy because I like what I've seen. I don't know why he's down this low. I think there's some inconsistencies, but this might be a perfect tackle to guard conversion with Delmar Glaze. So there you go there. Two picks left. I think we got to go get, you know, Goody's talked about it. Probably should do it in at least one of these two. So let's make the move. Let's go get a... Maybe a confident young passer in, in the Golden Dome here in Sam Hartman, which is a very strange one to make. It's tough. The QBs down the, down the list are not as exciting. There's no doubt about it. And then I think we, we've we taken Watson before. Let's uh, let's take Cedric Gray with Edifuan Ulafoshio, who has a really good skill set and coverage and I think can be an asset on special teams as well. So there you go. Ulafoshio, the pick there. Maybe not as fun to those uh, who are who are at home saying, why the heck uh, have we moved back and around and all over the place? Well, you know, you go up and get a player like Terry and Arnold, you get Christian Haynes, you add a lot more picks in this area of the draft. I think it gets more fun there. I still have the three offensive linemen, which I think is probably going to be a staple of a lot of mocks. I still think defensive interior becomes a need here. Didn't go edge in this one, but get gray and Ulafoshio. So there you go. Two mocks, maybe a little crazier than, than, than people were hoping. Maybe not what you hoped, but two mocks on the last. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little fun versus predictive mock draft duel. If you did throw a like down there, subscribe. If you're new, plenty more draft content, Packers content, a mix of each coming very, very soon. Also, Quick look at maybe the Patreon that is being set up currently. There's going to be more prospect videos over there. Going to give you guys kind of a, a free preview of what we're doing over there uh, for a little while. So I hope you guys take advantage of that too. I will catch you guys in the next video. Farewell.